Blessed love, royal family. Give thanks for your presence. Eh? We definitely give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie the first. Honorable precise like here with you, just keeping a joy and happiness, of course, going into the Sabbath day. And of course, you know you are in the tiger's nest. And for sure, this is the Chalice Talk edition. You know, we usually do a Chalice Talk going into the, the Sabbath day, live and direct with our family. And of course, this Friday will be no exception. You already see what is on the board. You already see the title. And I'm sure many people are going to are going to read that and and did Jesus really exist two thousand years ago? And uh, what 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 we're saying here, actually, that term, pardon the the misspelling in anything there, but that term really is Jesus, Jesus. We're not talking specifically Jesus, but Jesus. We're talking all of that, and I know some ones are going to. You know, you're going to be saying, man, that, that's some old subject area there, man. There was no J in the English alphabet in the 1600s. <laughs> Family, this is the tiger's lesson. We don't bring no weak subject area to the table. If, if for some reason you think it's a weak subject area be because of the title and your outlook on it, well, I'm sorry. But this is a different kettle of fish coming here. I can tell you that. Now, for sure, real is Jesus. Rastaman would argue for years that, hey, J-E-S-U-S -S is not Jesus because G Jesus begin with the letter G. And it's G-E or Z-U-S or something like that. And they get Jesus and, yeah, but J-E-S-U-S -J -J -S is Jesus. Now, in reality, it is true if you're going to follow the law of phonics. But then the law of phonics, you know, ain't got no law. Because look at phonics. The word phonics alone is, is a P and a H. That totally... <laughs> and you wonder why people are dyslexic. P and H comes to, you know, phonics, which is really, you know, learning the sounds that the letters make and then putting them together to form a word. But a lot of these words, if you look at the word fire, that's why someone spell fire F-Y-A-H. You know, look at the word cough and the word laugh. L-A-U-G-H, laugh. So the f in laugh is G and H. And the f in so in, in phonics, bottom is P and H. So you have to know these things. It's not necessarily a rule. You, you just got to know that, hey, in laugh and cough, them two words there. I doubt there's any other word, maybe pop bath, I don't know. But the F sound is a G and an H. And when you see P and H, it's too, like Philip and all of these different things. All right. So P plus H equals F. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so Jesus now, at least J E S U S in its pronunciation really would sound Jesus if that's the rule you're using. I don't know, these other ones seem to have another set of rules, why right? just like knife and these different things, knife, eh? you know the word knife, king, knife, eh? king, N I F E, knife, K N I F E. No, as in to know, K, N, O, W, but the K is silent, but the W is silent too, K is, the K is silent, the word is now, N, O, W is now, K, N, O, W is no, and N, O is no too. Hmm. So it's a mystic language, I think by now you can pick that up. When you understand it and follow it, and that's why word sound is power. Because J-E-S-U-S in Espanol is neither Jesus nor Jesus. It's Jesus. J-E-S-U-S is Jesus. <laughs> like a, a Jesus in a totally different tongue. So, I am specifically speaking 
of the individual of 2,000 years ago. Now, I will be the first to tell you, no, Jesus ever exists. Jesus, the individual referred to as Jesus to me, is one of the later additions to the, 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 uh, the, the line or, or the orders of myth that spread from nation to nation. You have different mythos, mythological characters, Greece and Rome full of them. Mercury and Perseus and, and, and Andromeda and, and Hercules and, and Medusa and, and Jason and some of them are God characters and Jupiter and Atlas, them is mythological characters. In ancient myth as well, follow me good family, in ancient myth as well you have mythological characters that have been, um, that have been um, you know, created from, from a historical character. So a historical character would have come on the scene. And because of the powers that he established, you know, a, a whole myth is made around him. And sometimes the myth, you know, is the history of the character. Please listen to me, family. This is a teaching moment. Eh? It's not just coming to talk and talk. This is real. The subject is serious. I know where I'm going with it. All right. So you have time where you have historical characters, real people who would have done mighty works and, and the history of them just go on and on until it's, you know, it, it's superimposed until it becomes a legend. Because a lot of legends you know, is history, but there's an extra thing added to it we just spoke to you a few nights ago. Those of you who are subscribers of the Tiger's Nest radio program that is on Radio Anu every Monday to Thursday. On Monday, we did a program entitled the, the um, um, Tiger's Nest. And we spoke of the mighty guru that, that came into Bhutan on the back of his wife, who was in the form of a tigress. And, and she sprouted wings and they flew into Bhutan and he meditated in a cave for three years, three months, three strongs and three days. And then that, that cave was known as the tiger's lair, which eventually became the tiger's nest in Bhutan. You understand? Now, all of this, this is history. This is history. Now you may say, oh, come on, please, what history? Any man can fly on any tiger. And, and the tiger sprout. I would just say the tiger is his wife. Man, just stop it, stupid. It's me, not it. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. But what has happened there? It's reality. It's history. I don't believe that the man's spouse turned overnight into like an animal with black and orange stripes and all of that stuff. And, and that program we did on the tiger's nest, we went deep into that. We even spoke about those things people transforming into animals just to bring out the energy. I can't go into all of that now. I'm just trying to make a quick, 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 quick point. But that's why you should be a subscriber to the tiger's nest. So we spoke about all of that. No, I don't think that his wife turned into a literal tiger and then sprout wings and flew away and he jumped on her back and they end up in Bhutan. And if you go to Bhutan, the monks and the faithful one believe that. Literally believe that too. No. Oh. But yes, he, the, this black man went to Bhutan, Rinpo, Guru Rinpo, went to um, Bhutan and established the tiger's nest and meditated for such time. And he was strengthened by his wife who just like even Empress Taitu, one priest, honorable priest, Prince previous Sabbath gave a great culture on the altar where he said one time when the enemies were attacking uh, Menelik II, <laughs> well, I never read it, but I'll just tell you what the priest said. They said Menelik II was, you know, boxing and relaxing, telling, yo, today's a Sabbath day. We can't be fighting nobody on the Sabbath. And Empress Taitu said, oh, just passed the ammunition rust. And Empress Taito went on the battlefield to the point that 
Menelik the second had to pick up arms and say, hey, let's 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 go and, and, and defeat the enemy, you know. So so she was like a, a tigress that went even before him, Menelik the second. And and he, to the point that he had to follow her. You know, and she went out and she is. You have pictures of Empress Titan busting shot on the Italians. You follow me? Yeah, man, real thing. So, so, so the point I'm making now, when you're gonna speak about this in history, when when you see the ancient ones sing on the battlefield, Empress Tiger, Empress Titan went out like a tigress, and she sprouted wing and pounced on the enemy. Yeah. The next five, seven hundred years from now, people gonna tell him men and lick the second wife turned to a tigress or turned to a lioness or turned to whatever, you know, and, and ones will take that as literal. Even we as Rastas say them things. I hear man say when the king went to Haiti, Papa Doc turned into a dog and the king turned into a lion. Hmm? You never hear all these things. So so this is what I'm saying now. So history, things of historical um value, because you know, those who would live it and see it and pass the history down, they would lionize it to the point that we, especially us in this time, who totally lose the value of symbolism. Oh, we're going to tell you how much days Jonah stays in, inside of the big fish or whale or whatever you think it was. Yeah, man, because we have lost the understanding of the symbolism. So now those who, who those who are more sensible than believing anybody can stay in a fish for three days and three nights, they're going to throw the baby away with the bathwater and just tell you, oh, no, the whole of that is rubbish. <laughs> when it could be a true historical um, event, but because it has been lionized, things have been added, you know, on a symbolic level. To give it deeper meaning, you know, because we have lost the esoteric understanding, we totally read it wrong. So I'll repeat that point now. There are historical characters that have become, if you want to say, um, uh, mythological characters have been made from these very same historical uh, characters. But then you have mythological characters that people just make out in the blue. You check. And then some of us want to take these mythological characters and make them historical. Now, the Greeks and the Romans are very famous for that, for taking mythological characters. I know a lot of people just coming in, you know. But family, if you're serious, them is things they must watch from the beginning again. We're not here to entertain. Watch from the beginning again. You can even pull it back now. You don't have to keep up with no chat. We do in the chat in here. You watch it from the beginning and get the essence of what we're saying because it's a serious message we're putting out tonight going into the Sabbath. Of course, we're not going to make the Sabbath meet us on this live stream here. So I'm just showing you now with understanding that these, these the Greeks are known for that. Remember, most of their mythological characters are copycat versions of some African principle that we put in human form, like the Aset, like the Asar, like the Heru, like the Sobek, like these, what people call Egyptian gods and Meduneter, etc., have been have been whitewashed. And that is why you could take all of you know Mithra, and that's why you could take Dionysus, and that's why you could take these different so-called European. And, and so-called Far East gods and see the similarity, you know, with ancient Kemetic deities or ancient Kemetic Neter, because we all know the Greeks came and learned in ancient Northeast Africa. So you know, no, nothing too puzzling there. It's just clear and obvious. Okay, good. Now, I'm saying, or did the Father Mikoye family, that Mr. Jesus, is one of their mythological characters. But what about Mr. Jesus now? Remember, we're not talking about J, the alphabet letter J. In fact, let me deal with this before we go too far. You know, because there's this thing that, you know, there's no J in the, in the Hebrew language and J just come into 
English some 400 years ago and J this and that. Okay, fair enough. Now, number one, His Majesty in Amharic. You see, I bring Amharic scholars on the program and put the question to them because I never say I'm no great Amharic or no gay scholar. But if Hebrew didn't have J, that is up to Hebrew. But we use the J long time in Africa. John Hoy means His Majesty. He tell me Hebrew don't have no J. So what? We, what we try to tell me? What that have to do with the price? Of, you know? <laughs> in 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 um in Akan, you know, we say Ja. Ja Amon. In Akan, not Ya Amon. We utilize Ya and we utilize Ja. Some of us we jump too fast, you know. That's what I'm saying. You know, knowledge is good. It's good to have all this knowledge. But do you understand all what you know? So this thing about J and J. Well, you know, no, 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 no. Jesus, no Jesus ever existed. Because because uh there was no J in the English alphabet. And what, what is that? But the sound J, J, J was always there. So English and Hebrew maybe just didn't catch up yet. But J, J is there. It's, it's a sound. So I agree, Jesus never existed. But as, you know what I mean, as a scholar Rasta, to say there was no J in any language, that ain't no, that's not no good point. I might knock me that at a time. Eh? I might knock me that at a time. I ask the man if God exists. <laughs> He said, of course, I asked him, when did G come into the English language or the Hebrew language or any language at all? Which language it is that first said G? And he was like, I mean, God's supposed to be beyond language. You know? That was my point. That was my real point. You know, so, so sometimes we have to check our argument properly. I mean, it's good for conversation and, and to, you know, make it sound like, you know, what you're saying there. But if you get in the scholarly ring, this is why the Tiger's Temple, eh? that's why we created the Tiger's Temple. You know, for, for, for you know, got to go a little beyond the kindergarten level. The temple is where we bring heavy, hard scholarship in every way and every form. You know, even this upcoming Sunday, you know, first of all, I will be previewing uh, 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 an interview that I did with the honorable priest Nappy. And then I'll be taking it to another level where it would be maybe somewhat of a continuation of what we will be getting into tonight. All right, let me just move forward so we can get where we are going. And as I said, whether it's just us, I'm just kind of, you know, kind of getting the floor clean off before we, you know, do what we got to do. So when it is Jesus, or Jesus, or even Yahushua. Okay, so there's no J. All right. No Togawa. Let's just work with you. So Yahushua, uh, 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 or um, Yeshua. Yeshua. All right. Because even in the Bible, you know, Joshua is referred to as, a, I think it's Oshua. It's spelled with an, an O. Okay, fair enough. So it's not the J I talking about. We are wrestling about no J. I just want to know. That is why in the title I put 2,000 years ago. If he existed. All right. Very good. What you're looking at here is 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 really the, 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 uh, the great uh, St. George, even uh, slew him. The, the, the dragon at such time and give thanks to the mighty king Lali Bella, you know, in his crowning moments and his crowning vibration in all ways and all manners. Yes, my family, before we go in, let me just remind you, of course, that we are now shipping out the prosperity, which is the tincture of one of the tinctures within the line of products created by the great physician international specifically we speak of of course the honorable priest kailash leons you are gazing there on an example of the bottle of uh, prosperity and of course many of you would know 
that honorable priest Kailash just had a, a mighty a campaign even in Jamaica where he launched the answer which is another mighty product which is specifically a, a immune immune system enhancer very similar to the prosperity uh, both of them uh tinctures i mean you just take a few drops and you know exactly what is taking place in fact for those of you in antigua let me just remind you uh, quickly uh, please uh my craving your indulgence here for the moment that we will be having a wonderful lecture a presentation the honorable priest kailash will be having a, a wonderful lecture presentation in antigua on wednesday the 24th day of october not october august mosiah you know august is mosiah so on the 24th day of of, of um, August 2022, that will be on Wednesday. We will have the Honorable Priest Kailash Leons with us in uh, Anu in Antigua, world-renowned herbalist and traditional healer. And this will be at the Heritage Hotel, uh, 7 p.m. Sharp um, um, admission is only $50 Eastern uh, Caribbean, which is um, at, well, it's less than 20 US for sure. And of course, you know, you can reserve your spots uh, on our website, priestisaacinstitute.com, priestisaacinstitute.com, or call or WhatsApp us, area code 12687288289. Those of you who uh, may not be in attendance uh, because you are overseas specifically, well, we do give thanks. We will see what a package we can put together for you to see it even via a live stream. So that's the Honorable Priest Kailash Leons. And of course, he will be uh, definitely launching the brand new answer. See it here? This is the new, new laboring, lab, label in as well and endorsed by Brother Chronix, and you visit the Honorable Priest website and you will definitely see more of that. I'll be giving you more information concerning that as the time goes on. But for sure, those of you internationally who desire these products, you can definitely get them even on our website that you're looking at right here, priestisaacinstitute.com, the prosperity. Remember, the prosperity is definitely the, the, the male enhancing uh, tonic and and for sure it, what it really does is nourishes the the prostate and and of course cleanse the urinary tract as well strengthens the sperm count of a man of course it's very good to to alleviate erectile dysfunction and these different things and of course it doesn't mean that an individual has to even wait until they have any problem with erection and them kind of things there you're supposed to just naturally keep yourself healthy of course it's all fully natural as i'm saying directly from the halls of the great physician international specifically the honorable priest kailash leon's prosperity it has your you know um what, what one's referred to as the guinea hen root uh, and, and it also has the the nettle i ain't gonna tell you everything i'm just giving you a little taste it so you can see what's going on here and, and and different roots definitely from the halls of the great physician international so for sure those who will be there at the lecture again who desires to to contact us the information is there those who want to order their prosperity no matter where you are in the world you can get a bottle or two shipped to you. I don't know why you would just order one bottle of prosperity, you know, two, three, or five shipped to you, definitely. And of course, um, that will be done um, via the FedEx or the DHL, definitely, whichever one is appropriate. That's the prosperity. And of course, the answer that is strong against things like them COVID and all of these different things. These are products, my family, that are tried and proven. And of course, you could even again visit the Honorable Priest web website um, and you can Google either Mount Kailash or K Priest Kailash himself 
and of course hear the testimonies um, as it relates to these products and many, many other products that the Honorable Priest Kailash Leons has, and of course the service that he offers as well. Okay, so just contact us or you could order the prosperity right from our website right here at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge website. Very, very good. I want to read something here. Um, this is taken from the King James Version of the Bible. And, um, mm -hmm. okay, so, and this is somewhat talking about a judgment that shall be coming here. So we're looking at the book of Matthew. You can follow with me, Matthew chapter 20. Four and let me read mm, yeah somewhere from here and it says here from verse thirty let let's read from verse twenty nine immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man come in in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when shall, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away. And it goes on to say, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. So what we are seeing here, family, let's check this one, good. So, so he say now that this, this great judgment I like when he's saying that, you know, you shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Of course, you know, those who understand esoteric writings also highlight that that represents the sun, the literal sun, S-U-N, which it does, it does, coming in the clouds of the heavens. All right, but that doesn't take away uh, from the reality of that it could represent a man that represents the sun. So. No, no baby with the bath water here. Let us sift this thing out properly. So the son of man, a human being, is supposed to come with the clouds of the heavens, which obviously must be symbolic language, you know. And tri the, the, the tribes shall mourn. And, and when they see the, the sun coming with the clouds, and you know, angels shall come with great sound of a trumpet. 
Yeah. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. You hear this here? Hey, hey. This is Christ of 2,000 years ago speaking to his people, to his disciples. And he's telling them, learn the, the parable of the fig tree. When the branches yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So, this is a serious judgment. I mean, most one would consider that this judgment here hasn't taken place as yet. Yeah, ones would say, well, I mean, because obviously, you know, it's a heaven and earth shall pass away. Now, we know heaven and earth shall not pass away. Oh, well, has not passed away. Let me put it that way. Heaven and earth has not passed away because we're here on earth and heaven is heaven zion it shall not pass away okay fair enough now when you meditate it when i understand it eh, this is deep he said that verily i say unto you this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Hmm. Now, <laughs> which generation are you talking about? Remember, you know, he is talking to his disciples. And this is the Messiah speaking to his followers about the judgment that is eminent, mean that it must happen. And he is showing them that this generation that we are living in here shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. But no, no but that will make sense. How is it that that generation shall not pass? And listen, I know some of it because there are those who try all sort of way to get out of that one. They'll tell you, no man, the, this generation that he's talking of is the generation that shall be living in the time of that judgment. I agree. Of course I agree. I am totally with you. Yeah, I agree. So that means that's this generation here. I, I agree. So that means the man that's speaking that word is in this time here. No, man, that man was talking 2,000 years ago. Okay, hold on. Let us read the very same Matthew chapter 16. Follow me good. Verse 26. No, let's read from verse 27 and let's get it over with quickly. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. Same kind of vibes now we're talking. With his angels. Same thing. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death. Till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Who are you talking about? Now let me just go in one more time here. Let me explain this to you. According to Elijah Muhammad of the nation of Islam, his thought philosophy is that the Christ in the Bible or the Christ spoken of in the Bible is 75% um, prophetic and 25% historical. That's, that's not my philosophy. I, 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 I heard it first from the nation of Islam. 
So when you read about this Christ, whether it's Jesus or Jesus, you're reading of someone who, according to them, would have lived 2,000 years ago. Yes, they agree that yeah, he exists. In their, in their realms, he would have been called Isa. So whatever name, eh? Whatever name. is not the name I'm arguing right now. Isa is, is the Arabic version of his name. Isa. No J in that neither. Isa. But it's not the name I argue with. It's the person. And I'm not arguing. It's the person. I want to know if there was a person, a human being, 2,000 years ago. Because from what we're reading here, it doesn't really align with 2,000 years ago history. Because, eh, as I just said, Elijah Muhammad said, that 25% of what you're reading there is historic. So he's saying, yes, yeah, somebody did live at that time. And about 25% of the way you're reading, that is how the story really goes. But there's a lot of it. The rest of it is of another, as he would put it, another Jesus to come. I'm just talking like how Elijah Muhammad put it. Another Jesus to come. They don't even say Isa too much. Another Jesus to come. Okay. All right. Okay. It could be that. But the point is, what he highlighted there is that there was someone 2,000 years ago, and from his outlook, there is someone in this time. Okay. Fair enough. So if what Elijah Muhammad says is true, these prophecies that we are reading here has to be of the Christ in this time. You didn't hear what he said. Now, first of all, read verse 24 says, then said Jesus unto his disciples. He was speaking to the 12. And in speaking to the 12, he said, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Remember, eh? if you check the history that we've been given, all of them disciples not only died, but they died some horrible death. All of them. They have an account of all of them. Yeah, even in the Ethiopian, you know, legend. All of them get massacred some kind of how not just Judas alone deal with himself, you know. The rest of them, man, who gonna get hung upside down, all sort of things. But yet still, he is telling them that some of you shall not taste death. Not one of you, you know, or a couple. And two of, if it was two, he would have said two. Some of you shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Are you with me, family? That cannot be no 2,000 years ago. Now, I, I would lean to what Elijah Muhammad says. His, his, his mathematics, the percentage, I, 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 uh, I can't say. But I lean to that. Why? Because I personally am of that opinion that there was a Messiah 2,000 years ago. And 2,000 years before that. And 2,000 years before that. And in between too. And sometimes more than one come. And it's not man alone, they come as woman. The thing gets serious. So, so my, my, I, I look at it a bit different maybe than another person. Because I check for the concept. All astrologers, wake up. I check for the concept. That in every age, there must be a super God. 
and some other gods, you know, because even the Bible says, I shall send them saviors with the S, plural. So, so it's all right. I'm not losing it. Yeah, reality. But no, but we're here now. But what we're reading here does not apply to nobody 2,000 years ago. It is true. What you're reading in the New Testament applies to now, this time, all when the Christ go up in the mountain and transfigure it, and Moses and Elijah appear. That is applicable to now, in this time. Because the same Jesus Christ, which is Haile Selassie, Moses and Elijah did appear with him. Moses and Elijah did appear with him. One more time, Moses and Elijah did appear with him. So this is what he's saying here. Because the time is still now, you know. We, we, you see, we have this time as a simple time, you know. Let me show you something here, family. And, and those of, of I and I, who is uh, uh, Baba Shanti, should be able to comprehend the levels of this. And, and, and Rastafari in general, you know, follow me good. Now, this Psalm says here, Psalms 22. I'm going to read the last two verses. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. See the word generation come up again. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. Now, of course, you know, the, 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 the Psalms, you know, were speaking of the glory of the Lord, etc. of course. But now, just in the interest of time, the 30th verse is showing you that, hey, a seed shall serve him, and this seed that serve him shall be accounted for a generation. Now, you see, God coming this time. Marcus Garvey with us. Haile Selassie with us. The Honorable King Emmanuel with us. Is, 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 is the Almighty in flesh we see there. A human being. A man sitting with us and supping with us and talking with us. I never see none of them three people here. I never. I never sit with King Emmanuel. You know. Scheduled to rise the Sabbath service in the morning. And the Sabbath service, I go rise. I go have man there and the ultimate me that sit and burn chalice with King Emmanuel. There you go. Sunday in the Tiger's Temple, I going to be previewing or uh, bringing a, a, an, an interview for you that we conducted with the Honorable Priest Nappy. You will hear him speak of his connection with the Honorable King Emmanuel, personal connection. You understand? What's my point here? I mean, you have seen us done interviews with Honorable Priest Earl, Priest Lamont, and, and Priest Chris, and, 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 you know, ones that, again, would have supped and sat and, and learned the way directly of the Black Christ. A seed shall serve him, and it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. That's the generation there that served him. Most of us that come into this, we were maybe in diapers or even was born when some of them man were young and no gray in the beard, and they, they come in and sit in with Christ and burn in chalice with him. Real thing. And they serve him, and it account for a generation. And it goes on to say the 31st verse, and they shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall that shall be born. That's I and I. Those of I and I as Baba Shanti of my age and maybe below, 
who came in after, who didn't sit and see the glory. Of course, of course, we would have seen it if we did it, you know, we were awake, but we wake up and understand that well. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a man gone, reap a man, how you go? Yeah, reap a man gone. But, but the point is still that those, the seed that served him, hear me good, the man, the same man them that washes locks, the same man that, that pack his chalice, the same man them that had to come and report to him, the same woman them that wiped his mouth in his elder stage before he moved, the same woman them that iron his clothes and make sure that all is well, and the same kings that wrap his turban, them same ones is who we sit down and we interview. Is the same ones some of you go and, and sit up with and listen to and talk with. His driver would have driven you. A seed shall serve him. And it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. And they shall come and declare his righteousness unto a people. Why do they have to declare it? Well, because, because they were the generation that was amongst him. And to you make that move now, they shall come and declare it unto people, you know, his righteousness unto people that shall be born, that he hath done this. This is what he hath done. This is when he set up this tabernacle here. When he leave back a while, he went here. I was there when this man came. I was there when the, the Nigerian president came. You know, I was the one that took the document and carried to the UN. I was the one that presented this to, to Queen Elizabeth II. I was there when the Bingi them come and so on. So you see what they have done? They are declaring his righteousness unto a people that shall be born like I, that he hath done this. Now this prophecy here, right? You have to keep in mind that we, in reality, a time going to come when none of these seeds that was there will be there. Some of us know people that know Marcus Messiah Garvey. I can say, even if he's an old man, oh, yes, I remember Marcus Garvey. He's not going to be there forever. He will make a move. There are people that know the emperor and tell, yes, I, I saw him when he landed. I was right there in the crowd. Yes, I get you. You're not going to be there forever. The time going to come when nobody alive will be there to say, I knew Marcus Garvey. The time will come when nobody will be alive to say, yeah, man, I saw him this last night. And you know, when I saw him, what he did, you see, because he now is telling you what he witnessed for himself. Not no story. The man that knew Marcus Garvey is telling you what he witnessed for himself. Not no story. The elders that sit with King Emmanuel is telling you what King Emmanuel tell them. Not no secondhand story. But how long will that last? In the cycle of life. So my point is, this prophecy is for right now. This prophecy is for now, now, now. Not yesterday. And not tomorrow. For today, a seed shall serve him and it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born. I and I, Selassie, I, Ja, Rastafari, that the, he had done this. So that is a two-day prophecy. Family, that is a two-day prophecy. This is why I'm telling you what we're reading in Matthew chapter 16 is today, is today. It is an allegory, yes. It may be in metaphorical writing, yes. But metaphors become reality. That is why Osiris is highly Selassie. You could argue day or night if Osiris ever existed or not. That is up to you. But the principles of Os Osiris became a human being in highly Selassie the first. And all the different principles and all the different, all the different quote-unquote gods, Unkulukulu and, and Ogun and Oshun and Obatala, and, and all of these different principles that we have as quote-unquote gods, they manifest in human being. Ma'at walk the earth as a living woman. They manifest in human beings. Reality, it is just the truth. That's why we show you Haile Selassie is a pediment. 
Haile Selassie is Kepara, all of these things. And we, we prove these things by using prophecy and history and specific alignments that no one can deny. So this allegory here now of the prophecy, the prophecy that has been used as myth by the Europeans to create Jesus, the prophecy of the Yoshua, but this has to be of the prophetic level of the Yoshua. And it is saying here clearly, verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death. Who them people be? I'm going to repeat. You can still find someone, you know, that know Marcus Gap, many ones. You know, plenty of people that know the King of Kings. It's not like if they gone that long ago. Look at how much of people know King Emmanuel. And of his disciples, there are many that are there. Many. They're still there. The prophecy is for now, God. The time is now. You think this is a simple time we're living in? Some of you shall not taste death. Them is no time. All them disciples done dead according to the history. Matthew, Mark, John, Judas, Peter, they dead. They get killed. They get hanged. They get crucified upside down. So who are the disciples that shall not taste death? A seed shall stir him and it shall be accounted a generation and they shall teach his principles and his righteousness to a people that shall be born. Them prophecies is no time. This is no yesterday news. This is, revelation continues, Narasta. Revelation is a continual thing until it's sealed. The land of Judah just opened the seals. The thing gone now. Bust out the gates. Read, you need to go read Revelation again and try to find yourself in it too. I mind none of them that, that don't understand the thing. You take your time. Find yourself in the book. Eh, eh. Hear this one here now. This generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. This generation shall not pass. How long ago this was? 2,000 years ago? So that generation don't pass yet? It talking about now. I don't think nobody can deny this. So when you read your Bible and the New Testament and you read about Christ, don't, don't have your mind too far away. Think about now. This Christ in that New Testament is now. He is here. King Emmanuel the seventh. Adonai God. Ja Rastafari. Give thanks, family. Give thanks, you know, for the Sabbath day of coming. Give thanks for such meditation and happiness and the emancipation energy still going to the earth. Cutting and clearing and renting and tearing and moving all stumbling blocks from out of our way. Give thanks for all joy and happiness. In in the righteousness of salvation. Yes, my family, of course, it is an honor. Remember, you can definitely contact us for any more information that you need. Remember, we will be continuing this level on the Tiger's Temple on Sunday. So I'm looking forward to your presence in the temple. You know what to do. Just contact us, email us, and of course, get your pass to come into the temple. We start at 8 p.m. sharp. Wonderful. And of course, those of you who are checking again your prosperity, male enhancement uh, tonic, of course, for sure, you can definitely contact us and this will be shipped to you, of course. And um, definitely, this is of the product of the Great Physician International, Honorable Priest, the Kailash Leons, you know, International Herbal Physician. Yes, I long expected they begin down on these realms of war and sin, you know. Fain would we leave this weary road, live in love and rest with God. If Tang so long expected, they begin King Emmanuel. I, Sadasi, I, Cha,